What causes a seed to germinate? We have many times sowed a seed in our gardens and found it developing into a lovely shoot in the next couple of days or weeks. Today, we will discuss what causes this fascinating journey from a seed to a shoot and what dormancy is. The ripe seeds of plants germinate when they are exposed to favorable environmental conditions. However, the seeds of many plants do not germinate as soon as they are shed. They have to pass through a resting or dormant period during which they will not germinate, no matter how favorable the environmental conditions are. The dormant period may be days, weeks, or even years, depending on the species. Dormant seeds are usually dry, and their vital activities are much reduced. They respire anaerobically. They are able to withstand harsh environmental conditions, such as very cold or very hot weather, allowing them to survive longer in unfavorable seasons. Having a dormant period, or delayed germination, also benefits the seeds in terms of its dispersals and reduces their competition for water and light due to simultaneous germination. Dormant period can be purposely prolonged if seeds are kept dry. However, in this state, many seeds lose their viability in adverse conditions or if kept more than a few weeks longer. When the dormant period is over, the seeds will sprout if conditions are favorable. What is germination? Germination is the process during which the food reserves present in the seeds are broken down and the embryo starts to grow. Germination may be triggered by several factors, including changes in temperature or water availability. Some seeds require their seed coats to be broken, for example, by being passed through the gut of an animal before they will germinate. Like we discussed before, a dormant seed has a very low water content. Therefore, the first step in germination is the absorption of water by the seed. The seed swells and the tester becomes more permeable to oxygen and carbon dioxide. The swelling of the seed may rupture the tester. How long can a seed remain dormant and still germinate? Seeds of members of the melon family can germinate after a few years of storage. Plants from the deserts have seeds which can germinate after 15 years of dormancy. Seeds from moth mullein, buried in jars at the University of Michigan, germinated after an astounding 101 years of storage. However, the record-breaking number may belong to the date palm tree. Seeds from this plant were discovered near the Dead Sea, which was at least 2,000 years old. Imagine 2,000 years. Several of these seeds germinated within 48 hours of planting, and one of the plants produces flowers within a year of planting. Fascinating, isn't it? Do you know any other prehistoric seeds that can still germinate? Let us know in the comments below. What is something that increases in size but decreases in mass? Let us discover seed germination and the fascinating processes behind it. The external environmental conditions essential for germination are sufficient water, suitable temperature, adequate oxygen supply, and sometimes light or darkness. Role of enzymes in germination. When the water is absorbed by the seed, the cotyledons produce enzymes to digest the stored food so that the growing embryo can use it. In endospermic seeds, the enzymes flow into the endosperm to digest the food stored there. In non-endospermic seeds, the digestion of the stored foods occurs within the cotyledons. It is processed by the enzymes. In each case, the stored food is digested and the soluble end products of digestion are transported to the growing regions of the embryo. That is, the plumule and the radical. It is good to know that some of the food we eat is also utilized by plants to grow. Can you guess what they are? Yes, they are macronutrients, such as carbohydrates and fats. Carbohydrates, namely glucose, together with fats, are used in tissue respiration to liberate the energy required for growth and other vital activities. Another proportion of carbohydrates and fats are also used for the formation of cell walls and cell membranes. The amino acids from proteins are assimilated into the building of new cell organelles. Due to the absorption of water, and this is the answer to our puzzle, the seeds increase in size, but its dry mass gradually decreases because of the active tissue respiration. These activities continue until the seedling can make its own food by the process of photosynthesis. Types of germination. There are two types of germination, epigeal germination and hypogeal germination. In the case of epigeal germination, the cotyledons are carried above the ground. For example, sword bean seed, 
while in the case of hypergeal germination, the cotyledons remain below the surface of the soil, for example, maize and broad bean. Stages of germination. There are three main stages of germination. The imbibition of water, increased metabolic activity, and swelling of cells. First, water is imbibed into the seed. The 5 to 10% moisture level inside the seed then increases cellular respiration. Second, metabolic activity surges and synthesizes gibberellin hormone, which stimulates the enzymes required to convert the food storage to energy. Third, the cells swell and ruptures the seed coat or tester. The radical always grows rapidly and pushes against the tester and splits it at the micropile. The radical always grows downward, the same as gravity, no matter how the seed is positioned. Then, the lateral roots develop and help absorb water and mineral salts from the soil. Shortly after the radical emerges, the stem below the cotyledons grows and raises it above the ground. At first, the stem is hook-like, with the cotyledons bent over and still close together to protect the delicate plumule. The tester, already unpatched, while plumule continues to grow upwards, facing the light. Soon, the stem straightens, the cotyledons turn green and spread out, exposing the first leaves with the bud between them. This bud will grow into the future shoot. The foliage leaves expand, turn green, and carry out photosynthesis. This seedling is now a self-supporting plant. Why do some seeds successfully germinate, but not others? It is mostly due to improper planting conditions, like soil not having suitable pH, watering too much, seeding too deeply, or not planting in required weather conditions. As plants have broad and interesting explanations, let us know in the comments below if you want to know more. There is a close relationship between the fruit or seed structure and the way it is disseminated or dispersed around. But why is the dispersal necessary? Fruits and seeds are necessary to disperse in order to avoid overcrowding a particular area with the same plant species. Competing for food and sunlight with the parent plants is tough for the newly grown plants. On the other hand, the dispersal of the seeds will also help the plants to find new, favorable habitats and also help them to control the spread of various diseases and arthropod attacks. The dispersal of fruits and seeds is affected and aided in different ways by the external agents such as wind, animal or water. Many plants have their fruits or seeds modified to ensure their proper dispersal at the right time. Dispersal by wind. Here's an interesting phenomenon. Fruits and seeds have, over the years, adapted well to its propagation by wind. Take the pretty-looking wildflower dandelion, for example. If the flowers don't dry up and release their parachutes of fine hairs, we won't be able to see them on almost every nook and corner in every spring. Fruits and seeds that depend on the wind for their dispersal mostly have these fine hairs or more features like flat, wing-like structures and large surface area, which increases its buoyancy in the air, like a maple seed. They may be small and light, so they can float in the air and be readily blown about by the wind, for example, orchid seeds. The wings or parachutes of the fruits or seeds are formed from different parts of the flowers. For example, in the case of cotton, the organ of dispersal is the set of hairs around the tester. Dispersal by animals. The fruits or seeds which the animals forage on are the ones that are most likely to be dispersed. Therefore, most of the fruits dispersed by animals are edible. In some fruits, e.g. tomatoes, the whole pericarp is succulent as it stores food minerals. In lemons and oranges, the fruit chamber has succulent hairs. Food materials are mainly stored in these hairs. Succulent fruits are scented and their skins are often brightly colored to attract animals. For example, the peel of orange contains glands which produce a scented and rather volatile oil to attract animals. The whole fruit may be eaten by animals such as birds, bats, cats, dogs, etc. The small and hard seeds are indigestible and may be excreted far away from the parent plant. Sometimes the seeds are spat out by animals and very often still capable of germination. In other cases, the animals carry the fruits and only eat some part of them, then leave the seeds behind to germinate. An example of this is mango. Some dry fruits such as xanthium can also be dispersed by crossing animals. Fruits adapted for this method of dispersal possess hook-like structures by which they can adhere onto the fur or skin of animals passing by, 
These fruits may later be brushed off the animal's bodies, or they may fall off when the hooks shrivel. The fruits may also adhere to our clothing and be dispersed in a similar manner. Dispersal by water Flowing water in the ocean, rivers and streams are important agents of dispersal. Aquatic plants and plenty of plants living on riverbanks or the seashore depend on water dispersal. These fruits and seeds are adapted for floating and can drift for considerable distances. For example, the coconut fruit incorporates a waterproof skin. Inside the skin, a fibrous husk containing numerous air spaces lighten the fruit and enable it to float on the water. The seed within it contains a store of food, that is, the meat in the coconut, and there is sufficient water in the seed to enable its germination even on sandy shores. We can see another example from the seeds of the water lily. The seeds have an arrow, a small float, which holds air. It can float on the water away from the parent plants until the arrows decompose. Then, they sink to the bottom of the river or pond and germinate. Here's an interesting fact. Some fruits do not depend on external aids such as wind, animals or water to disperse their seeds. When these fruits are drying up, they burst open suddenly with great force to throw out the seeds. As in the case of ripe balsam fruits, they eject the seeds away from the parent plant. Other examples are rubber fruits and the legumes of many plants. Legumes are dry fruits that split along both edges or sutures. Peas and beans are legumes. In these legumes, the pericarp shrinks as it dries up, building up tension, which force open the fruit suddenly. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.